Hi everybody, it's Hazel and I'm here today to talk to you about enzymes. I know lots of people hate this topic, but at the end of this really tiny tutorial, I hope I'll clear up some and any of your issues with this topic. So, where to begin? Let's start by our key definition of enzymes. Right, so an enzyme is a biological catalyst. That means that it speeds up the rate of a reaction without being used up. This makes enzymes super helpful and important because when we use them in an industry, like in biological washing powders, or we have them inside our body, it means that they, they go around and they do reactions and without them, these reactions would be far too slow or require far too high temperatures or be very expensive. So yeah, they are really useful. Um, in terms of how an enzyme works, remember that an enzyme, you might have seen a picture, it's like a pa you know, Pac-Man, and it has like a mouth, and we call that the active site. And what you have is you have a substance which fits into that specific active site on the enzyme. And what you find is that the substrate, we call that substance, breaks apart and produces a product. When the two are combined, what we have here is an enzyme-substrate complex. As with all science, it's really important that you use crucial keywords, things like specific, optimum, active site. Even if you're not sure of your answer in the exam, just literally vomit out all of these words onto your paper and I promise you'll pick up some excess marks somewhere along the way and it will really help bump up your grade. So let's talk about enzymes in terms of digestion. Now, enzymes, I wonder if you've already noticed that most of their names end in A's. So again, in the exam, if you don't really know what the question's on about, if it's a word that ends in A's, we're talking about an enzyme. Protease, for example, um, really handily, it sounds like what it's breaking down. Protease speeds up the breakdown of proteins into amino acids. Our next enzyme that we need to know is amylase. Make sure you spell that correctly, A-M-Y-L-A-S-E. And that breaks down a different food group. It breaks down, this time, carbohydrates. This time you need to specify starch, and that's going to be broken down into glucose. Finally, we're going to look at lipase. Right, this time we're talking about fats. I don't know if you know, but the more scientific word for fat is lipid. So, as you've guessed it, lipase breaks down lipids. Slightly tricky, you must remember that the two products formed this time are fatty acids and glycerol. Finally, we need to talk about the effect of the conditions on enzyme controlled reactions because enzymes are very, very fussy little things and they really don't work very well if you don't treat them right. So the first condition we can look at is temperature. And with all reactions, if you have a very low temperature, you tend to find that the enzyme controlled reaction will occur very slowly. And that's just due to, due to collision theory. Because if you have an enzyme and you have your substrate, and they're just moving around really slowly, very lethargic, very low temperatures. You'll find that they don't really come together very often. So our active site and our substrate doesn't come together and you end up with a very, very slow rate of reaction. What happens then is as you increase the temperature, obviously these enzymes and the substrates will be moving around far more quickly and you'll see a really nice increase in the rate of activity in the enzyme controlled reaction. And then right at the top, um, I'll find a graph to show you. What you see is there's an optimum temperature, and that really means, make sure you use the word optimum in the exam, it means the temperature which the enzyme works best at. So pop down optimum temperature, you can normally read it off the graph and it's right at the top. And then what you see is that it, after you've exceeded that optimum temperature, the rate of reaction literally drops off. And the word we use to describe that is denaturation. So the enzyme becomes denatured. And what that means is that the active site has changed shape and therefore the substrate can no longer fit in. Because remember, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. They've got very specific shapes. And if they no long, the substrate can no longer fit in, then you're basically your enzyme's screwed. Make sure you never describe the enzyme as dying. You won't get any marks for that. The word you need is denatured. And then finally, the second thing we need to talk about is pH. Um, again, enzymes have an optimum pH. So... For example, in the body, that will just be about 7 because pH 7 is neutral. However, certain other enzymes will prefer a far more acidic pH. So protease, for example, which is found in the stomach, the stomach is full of hydrochloric acid. It has a pH of around 3. Therefore, protease's optimum pH will be around 3. As soon as you decrease it to 2 or increase it to 4, you'll end up with your enzyme rate of reaction dropping off and therefore you get a very distinctive curve 
which looks like this. So yeah, there's the Whistle Stop Tour of Enzymes. I really hope you found it helpful. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below for me and I look forward to seeing you next time.